So there are additional alignment programs. I just talked about the, uh, the tuxedo suite of programs. Um, I have here a list of other programs and a really nice review if you are interested in um, learning about other programs. Like I said, these are very fast evolving and you should really look into the most current literature to, to determine which program you should use when you're doing your alignment. Finally, I have here a few valuable resources that I would suggest anybody who would like to learn more about sequence alignment invest in. So this is a book that describes more on the theory and also practices for BLAST. It will give you uh, more of a basis for how to do command line blasting if that's um, something you're interested in. And then these next three books uh, are very helpful. The BASH shell is is what you're going to want to use to do your command line um, alignments and then um, subsequently you're going to need to interpret those outputs and parse them into a usable format and Perl is a very nice program um, programming language to do that in and I have here two books that um, are very helpful for learning how to use Perl. So with that I will take any questions. So there is a one question here. Uh, it is, is Mummer free? Yes, it is. And Candy, I believe all of the, the software you discussed today, except for VMatch, was um, freely available. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. And I provided the URLs where you would want to go to download each of the programs, um, which will be on the slides that, Heather, you're going to put up on the left, yep. right? That's correct. And what I'll also do is um, make a list of external links at the bottom of the page um, so that if you don't have the presentation handy in front of you, you can also look at that page of links. Um, and I will do the same thing for the um, four texts that Candy uh, showed to us at the end of the presentation as well. Okay, so the next question is, do you have comments on the speed or computation time needed for the def different next generation sequence alignment tools? Um, so that's going to depend partly on how you build your index and um, the number of reads you have and the size of your genome. So each of the programs that I talked about today has a manuscript that was published with the program and they have estimates in there for alignment to the human genome, but um, for plant people, this is, those estimates aren't going to be the same. So it's going to depend on your computer and um, how many reads you have, et cetera. So I, I don't think I can give an estimate for the general case. OK. Um, and it's, I've got another, oops, another question here. Uh, is there any size limitation to align two genomes using Mummer? Um, I don't think so. Although, and then I've always done it on a chromosome by chromosome, and so maybe if you put a whole genome in, I'm sure there is a maximum limitation, but I've not reached it. Okay. And so would you generally recommend, if possible, for people to try to look on more of a uh, chromosome, chromosome basis um, to try to, to perhaps decrease uh, computation time a little bit? Yeah, definitely the um, smaller the thing you're aligning, the, the faster it's going to be in Mummer. Um, also, just for visually looking at it on the um, graphical display that I showed you all, if you have 10 chromosomes by 10 chromosomes, it's going to be very difficult to see uh, where individual um, inversions, et cetera, are. And so you, if you have no idea which chromosomes are, should be aligned, you may want to do a pairwise of all possible chromosomes. Um, but Mummer is actually a very fast program computationally. It's, it's okay. quite fast. And the next question is, 
Um, are the next generation sequence alignment software, are they appropriate or are they capable of uh, performing, or are they suitable, sorry, for, for genotyping by sequencing? Yeah, so um, within Bowtie and Tappet, you can output in SAM format. This is then compatible with SAM Tools, uh, which is a program for calling um, SNP and Indel variants. Um, SOAP is another program that I didn't talk about, but it, um, it's also used for aligning next generation sequence, sequences, and it has a variant color within the program. And um, that was so uh, was on that last slide as another one of the programs. So definitely, the, um, both of those programs are, are highly suited for calling variants. Okay, and now we have um, a little bit of a related question on looking at variants, which is how do, how do you choose the gap opening penalty and the gap extension penalty in BLAST in order to find SNPs? As an example. Um, so there's a standard scoring matrix, Blossom, that um, is typically used. I have not called SNPs um, from BLAST results, so I don't know exactly what parameter you would want to use, but um, you may want to try multiple parameters and, and estimate from there. the best I could give on that. Sorry. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. We have a little bit more time for questions. Um, if there are some looming thoughts out there. And I'd also like to encourage you, John has put up this title slide again, uh, I'd encourage you to uh, check out our the e-extension content that the plant breeding and genomics community has put out. And you can find that at uh, eextension.org slash plant underscore breeding underscore genomics. And we will be uh, posting the recording to this site uh, within about the next week. And I would also encourage you to sign up for uh, PBG News, and we use this to announce um, all of our webinars, provide some reminders for webinars, and also announce other events that um, and exciting news from the plant breeding and genomics community in practice. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for attending today and for all of your questions. If you have uh, lingering questions or questions that um, come to your mind later on, please direct them to me at merk, M-E-R-K, dot nine at osu dot edu. And thank you very much for joining us.